October is here and my head is spinning with all sorts of new ideas and projects. New designs, new projects around the house, garments for my loved ones and the festive season that is not so far away anymore. Last time that I left off, I was working on a little dress for Iris. She's worn it so many times already. It's fully yet soft at the same time and goes so well with everything in her wardrobe. So naturally, I needed to cast on a second one. We went stash diving one afternoon and she chose this beautiful speckled organic merino yarn from Acker Yarns. I went back to the secret yarn store in town and got some matching silk mohair to make the dress even more cozy. The dress is done and it's perfect. I also found her a little handmade cardigan in the thrift store the other day, so she's good for this winter in terms of woolly items. I know that she will be warm and cozy the next few seasons and it makes my mama's heart happy. October is probably the busiest month of the year for me, but also my favorite. Since I started working for myself almost six years ago, I yearn every year for October. As soon as September comes around, I start dreaming about golden leaves, cozy jumpers, pumpkin everything, foraging, and all the knitwear that I will start publishing. I feel that there's just not enough October days. This year, I've been jumping from one project to the next, trying to wrap up everything on time for all my sweaters to be ready to be published. At this very moment, I'm working on the very last bits of the herringbone and flower jumper, which is still unnamed, making sure that all of my measurements are correct, double checking my gauge and recording a little video tutorial for it. It is available as a pre-release on my Patreon and will be launched at the end of November on Ravelry if you want to grab a copy of it.
seasonal decor is one of my favorite thing to do at the beginning of a new season. I remember when living in China how much I was craving for real seasons as it felt that spring or autumn would last only a few days and then it was either terribly hot or cold. I just love this change of season so much. They each have so much to offer and enjoy. This autumn, we haven't really got a chance to go to the woods very much for foraging. Our daughter, who is almost two and a half, loves the outdoors as much as we do, but we're just so scared of going foraging for mushrooms with her. So the only time that we could do it is on our working days, but work has been busy too. So as a small way to contain myself, I got a few seasonal flowers and started decorating the house for this season. If I can't go outside, outside needs to come inside. We managed to go chestnut picking though one afternoon and I sneakily put the few mushrooms that I found along the way in my pockets. That was such a terrible appetizer, I must say. What I know is waiting for us in the woods. This month's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Over the past year or so, I've been using Skillshare, watching educational videos while working on my simple knitting. If you know me, I simply cannot do one thing at a time only. I need both my hands and brain to be stimulated at once. So Skillshare has been a wonderful learning outlet for my long knitting hours. Skillshare is an online learning community where thousands of creating folks share some of their knowledge and skills on all sorts of topics embroidery, creative writing, pottery, you name it. One of my favorite class to take was Watercolor in the Woods, a beginner's guide to painting the natural world with Rosalie Hazlett. I like to revisit it from time to time when I need some inspiration to work on my foraging journal. Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link in my description a one month free trial of Skillshare membership.
This month I got quite a few things in the mail that I thought you might be interested in seeing. First off is this stunning yarn bowl that is handcrafted in the UK. I stumbled across it the other day as I was looking for something quite similar and fell in love with its aesthetics. As I might start incorporating more color work in my designs, I thought that the multiple holes in this yarn bowl could come really handy to prevent all the threads from getting tangled. Also got a few books from Mary Wallin as I find her color blending so inspiring. I do struggle to incorporate multiple colors in my own work as I tend to prefer more minimalist and simple designs but I can't help but to drool on full Fair Isle garments from time to time. A few stitch markers from Coconuts, as it always tend to disappear for some reason. gauge counter because my brain is not what it used to be. Last month I told you that I made plenty of apple sauce with all of the apples that I managed to get at the Island my garden. But even after making a dozen of jars, there were still plenty of apples to bake. So I tried a new recipe. It's very simple and works really well for our family as we have quite a few food intolerances. This apple cake is made using acorn flour and doesn't have any egg whites. It does have butter though, but you could easily substitute that if you don't consume it. I will include the recipe down below. And please let me know if you try it.
here I am for a new little chit chat. You seem to have enjoyed the segment quite a bit uh, last month, so I thought that I could sit down once again and um, let you know what's happening. I have quite a few uh, plates of Plutopia in front of me, and the reason for that is that I just went stash diving a second ago to show you uh, some of my favorite colorways. I think the three that I have in front of me are my top three out of the whole Plotulopi range. Out of the, the whole Plotulopi range. This colorway is ivory beige, I think. Um, I'm not sure on the names, the, um, so I will include the numbers in the description um, box down below. This one is um, Wild woods, I think. Dark or dark forest, something we see. <laughs> and that's the colorway that I'm wearing today. And this colorway, which I don't remember the name. Um, so I will include numbers down below for you to, uh, to check if you are interested in that. So yeah, the reason why I'm sitting down today um, is to announce the release of the Wild Posy jumpers. So I've been working on these two jumpers for the past couple of months. Um, the first idea came to me in February when my parents were visiting and we were on the road to check um, or just to go to like a little cottage that we rented um, a, few, a few miles away. And as I was in the car, I started sketching for, um, well, this one actually and yeah I swatched um, I swatched at the cottage and started knitting uh, right away I remember coming back home um, just to get some Plotulopi because I, I needed to swatch right away so um, yeah while posy there's two jumpers or two versions rather uh, Flora which has the lace and Luna, which only has the texture. Um, and I've been wearing these jumpers so much. This one not, because I've just finished uh, weaving, weaving in the ends, but this one has been worn so much. I think I completed it in May, maybe, and I even have footage of me wearing it um, in July in the Thassa Friends, because it was really, really chilly. Um, so, yeah. It has a little bit of ease, not too much. It's quite fitted. Um, the sleeves are really, really fitted. Um, it's it's quite a flattering um, fit, I think. Um, and yeah, it's knit in Lotulopi, so um, there's no ends to even apart from the very last ones. You can spit splice the whole jumper. Um, it's knit top down um, and I must say that the yoke section is quite addictive that's why I actually made three versions of this sweater plus a hat um, it's a really engaging and um, yeah just really addictive texture and then if you if you enjoy Plotulopi then it's rows and rows and rows of beautiful stockinette stitch um, in the um, pattern, um, the sweater is cropped. I tend to wear these jumpers with high-waisted skirts, um, so they're quite cropped. So you might need like an extra plate in case you want to make it full length. Um, for these samples, I've used, I think, four plates, um, and the sweaters weight less than 400 grams, so they, they don't weight anything that's super um, super light and really really warm um, but quite airy if that makes any sense if you've knit with Plotuloki before you know that it's it's um, a wool that doesn't make you sweat in the sense that the stitches are quite open um, and if I'm not mistaken this is knit on a 5.5 .5 millimeter needle so us 9 so it's quite a large age 
and the yarn is um, held double so it goes really really quickly um, I think I could I could make another one in a week and a half maybe um, and yeah just two versions um, Luna for um, the texture and Flora for the lace so if you get the pattern you will have two versions um, the numbers are quite similar but different for um, the yoke portion as the, the repeats are not worked with the same number of stitches. Um, what else can I let you know about that? Yeah, the pattern is coming out on the 29th of October, so if, if I manage to upload this video on the 29th, you should be able to get the pattern um, today and I will include a discount code in the description box down below. I'm going to try to remember all of the things. Um, and yet for um, pour les personnes qui parlent français, uh, le patron est aussi disponible en français. Donc si vous le téléchargez sur Ravelry, uh, le patron viendra en français et sur mon site le patron sera aussi disponible en français. C'est tout en un, deux en un, trois en un, il y a deux patrons, quatre en un. <rire> One last thing came in the mail this month. As you know, if you've been watching my previous videos, I talk a lot about my Chiago needles as they are my favorite ones to use. But for the very first time in a while, I've been wanting to give a try to something different. When I stumbled upon these a few months ago, I was immediately drawn by how beautiful they looked. From the linen case to the golden joints on the needles, everything was so appealing to my eyes. But are they truly worth it? These are the sea knit needles. They are handcrafted in Japan and are made out of a very beautiful and sleek bamboo. 
The tips on the needles are not too sharp and not too blunt, which makes the knitting really enjoyable. The cable twist on the joints, which is quite pleasant when knitting. Overall, I really do enjoy working with them. They still don't beat my chia goose as they tend to slow me down a little bit. I would say that if you're working with sleeker yarns, these could be really good for you. But if you tend to work with more rustic yarns, metal needles might still be the best. But once again, we all knit differently and all have very different tastes. So what I would advise you to do before purchasing a whole set is to get one circular needle only, then see if you like it. This will be very handy for us, or rather for me, as we will be traveling next summer. No more confiscated needles at the airport for me. Here, I'm working with my new needles. I changed my chagos to my C knit to work on the sleeve, and by the end of it, I kind of forgot that I wasn't using the chagos anymore. The sweater that I had started last month is already finished. I can't even tell you how much fun of a knit this was. It had the perfect amount of interest and mindless knitting to keep it a very engaging knit. It was a one more round situation, if you know what I mean. I simply could not put it down. Texture, stocking it stitch, color work. Put this on repeat a few times and you already have a sweater on your lap. The yarn was as pleasant to work with and it was really good to work with something else than unspun yarn, I must say. It's just a different feeling between the fingers and these colors are just everything. I'm so happy that I followed your advice and went for an all over texture. It's very different from what I've done before and I really do love it. Am I planning more color work in the future? Most probably.
Thank you.